Today we're gonna to look at some editing apps on the iPad, specifically apps that you can edit raw files in and take full advantage of that raw file. Uh, I have a few different apps here I'm gonna mention and I use each of these for different reasons. So I'll kind of explain why I use each app and what their use case is. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to see whether or not editing on an iPad could kind of fit into your workflow. This video is also sponsored by Logitech. Their new combo touch case for the iPad has solid protection, a detachable keyboard and trackpad. It's one of the most versatile keyboard cases on the market, but we'll talk more about that later in this video. And just for performance clarification, I'm running all of these apps on my 2018 11 inch iPad Pro. It's not the latest version with the M1 chip, so I'm sure that iPad will run all of these great because I've had no issues running any of these on my iPad Pro. However, I've never tested any of these on like the base level iPad, iPad Air, etc. So uh, I can't speak to how well they perform on that, but if you have any of your own experiences with those iPads and any of these apps I'm gonna mention, go ahead and let us know what your experience has been like in the comments down below. The first app we're gonna take a look at and probably the most popular and obvious option out there is Lightroom. I've been editing on the Lightroom classic desktop version on my Mac and MacBook, you know, all the different computers I've had over the years for probably over a decade at this point. So if you have any experience using Lightroom Classic and you've never used the mobile version, once you jump in, it is different, but you're gonna be able to find your way around it pretty easily. Most things in Lightroom are here. It doesn't have everything, and there are a couple things that I don't really like about it, which I'll talk about in a second, but most cases, this has everything I would possibly need for most uses. Your exposure, highlights, shadows, contrast, color adjustments, retouching, it has most things here in the app. However, if you're doing any kind of large volume editing, for that I actually prefer using just the regular Lightroom Classic on my MacBook or a desktop. I found that to be much faster, although again, I don't have the M1 chip. I've heard that that makes a big difference in the export times, uh, but I think I'm much quicker on a keyboard with all the different shortcuts because the keyboard shortcuts are not usable with a keyboard attached to the iPad because it's not Lightroom Classic, it's Lightroom Mobile, so those keyboard shortcuts aren't gonna transfer for over uh, for large batch editing for that I do prefer to use classic but for a handful of photos here and there or just one photo that I might just want to toss up on social media uh, I can do really anything I would need for that in Lightroom mobile so it's not as fast as Lightroom classic but I honestly do enjoy using it more than Lightroom classic just because there's something about editing on an iPad where you're holding it in your hand and it has this sort of like tactile and intuitive kind of experience you just don't get that same kind of experience with a MacBook or a desktop. So for that, I do really like using the iPad, although again, it's definitely not gonna be as fast. Now the next app we're gonna take a look at is Affinity Photo. This is a lot more like Photoshop and actually a lot of photographers I know who rely on Photoshop on their desktop, when they're editing on the iPad, they actually opt for Affinity Photo instead of the iPad OS version of Photoshop because at least at the time of recording, the iPad OS version of Photoshop isn't as fully featured, whereas Affinity Photo has just about anything you could need. You can separate things into layers, have different brush adjustments, masks, adding text, composites, this thing is loaded with features. It has way more than I really ever need for most of my editing, although when it comes to retouching, I actually prefer to use Affinity Photo than Lightroom. If I had something that needed to be retouched, I would edit in Lightroom, export it, and then open that again in Affinity Photo to do all of my retouching. I just think the retouching does a more natural job than Lightroom. All the retouching looks way more natural and doesn't stand out as much. Uh, it also seems to be a little bit faster than Lightroom as well. Uh, anything like blemishes on the skin or flyaways in my subject's hair, uh, that kind of stuff, I find Affinity Photo to be a lot better than Lightroom Mobile. So as I'm sitting here editing this video, I realize I kept saying Lightroom Mobile when I meant to be saying Lightroom CC. I think it used to be called Mobile at one point and then they switched it over to now it's just Lightroom CC. So if you were jumping on the comments to correct me on that, keep your pants on, it's all good. Let's get back to it. It's also worth mentioning that this is a one-time purchase. I believe it was $21 when I purchased it and you know, Adobe with Lightroom and Photoshop and really the entire creative suite that they have, um, everything there is under a subscription model and you can do that with the entire suite or you can kind of pick and choose which apps you wanna pay for each month. But with Affinity Photo, you can just buy the app once and you don't have to worry about it. It's not gonna renew every year or every week or month or anything like that. So that's more of a personal preference thing. I know some people 
prefer to just buy the app once and other people like that they can try it out for a month at a lower price. Uh, that's more personal preference, but I thought it would be worth mentioning. Before we take a look at the last editing app that honestly kind of surprised me, uh, I'm gonna take a minute to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Logitech. If you've ever spent any time researching the iPad Pro, you've probably seen people ask the question, can it replace my laptop? With the Combo Touch keyboard, it's not a laptop, it's so much more. You can type, sketch, view, and read anywhere, anytime, all while keeping your iPad Pro protected. With a detachable keyboard and adjustable kickstand, you have incredible flexibility with a form fit case that's perfectly molded to your iPad Pro. You're getting a premium experience at a great price with features like smart connector technology, auto backlit keys, space for the Apple Pencil, and a premium woven fabric that doesn't smudge or leave fingerprints every time you pick it up. I use my iPad Pro on a daily basis and I use it in a lot of different ways. So if I'm just sitting on the couch, handwriting out some notes, planning out my week, I can do so without the keyboard getting in the way and it's still protected inside the case, but if I ever want to type out any long form notes or respond to emails, having the keyboard right there is amazing. I've used Logitech peripherals for years, everything from my MX keys to the MX Master 3. I've always been happy with their products and the Combo Touch is no different. If you want to try the Combo Touch out for yourself, you can pick one up using the link in the description of this video. Thank you again to Logitech for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to some photo editing apps. Okay, the third and final app we're going to talk about is Darkroom, and honestly this one kind of caught me by surprise. It had been a while since I'd really looked for any sort of alternative photo editor on the iPad. Once they really beefed up Lightroom Mobile, I felt like I didn't need anything else because I was just so used to working in Lightroom. Darkroom kind of feels like Lightroom if Lightroom wasn't under the Adobe umbrella. It has all the essential features of Lightroom that I use, but nothing else. It just kind of really focuses in on the core essentials that you need for photo editing. I love the layout. I love the UI. Um, it has really everything I would need although I will say that with the highlight retention and shadow retention as I'm kind of adjusting those sliders, I think I get more out of those files in Lightroom. If I pull the same file into both apps, I feel like I have a little bit more control over the highlights and shadows in Lightroom as opposed to Darkroom. But of course, how long has Lightroom been around? I mean, they've had however many years of experience and Adobe behind them making it all happen. Whereas, you know, Darkroom is a much newer app, so they're starting uh, from scratch a lot more recently than Lightroom has. And I've even looked through some older videos on YouTube of people using the Darkroom app, and just within the last year or two, you can see they've added a ton of features into this app and have really kind of refined it and improved it, uh, probably with a lot of user feedback as well. Well. It's always good to see when anything like that, any kind of tool for us photographers as it continues to evolve and get better, especially with people's feedback in there, that's really rad to see. So as of right now, you know, it is a great app, but who knows what it'll look like in a year or two or even more. And again, I should also mention that this one is sort of a buy it once or subscription model. You kind of have the freedom to choose that however you want. Um, I have no affiliation with Darkroom, with Affinity Photo, with Adobe. Um, I've bought and, you know, use all of these with my own money, just so you know. Um, but again, I thought that would be worth mentioning. So those are the three apps that I use the most when it comes to editing photos on the iPad Pro. I use the iPad Pro for a million different things every day. Uh, it's one of my favorite tools that I use, but when it comes to editing photos, these are the apps that I'm using. Uh, I don't edit all of the time on it, but if I want to actually take some time and just work on one particular photo, I really enjoy using the iPad Pro just because of that experience. So uh, if this has been helpful for you, give the video a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below or any other you know editing apps that you would recommend. Um, if you'd also like to see any Anything else on the iPad Pro from like file management or any other apps that I use throughout my day uh, let me know in the comments but that's it for today thank you guys so much for everything I love you I'll see you guys next time